Hi, this is Dr. Lexon number 12. Right, in order to make a video this week, um, I've, I've scouted um, various other places to get some idea of what people want. And um, our first tip is going to be um, from one of your comments. So it's a high and low number generator. So a bit like play your cards right. Uh, secondly, uh, we're going to be looking at how to create glitch effects with the text gadgets. And thirdly, um, a thumbnail generator, something that you can put into your level to take nice thumbnail pictures and then delete uh, so that your object is lovely and stampable. So enjoy the video. Right, somebody asked, they wanted to make a game mechanic where a player gets to choose whether a number is higher or lower than one they've been shown and then whether the next one is going to be higher or lower than that one and so on and so on. So um, those of you in the UK will recognise that as play your cards, right? So if I, uh, I get shown a four, I get to decide is the next card going to be higher or lower? I'm going to say it's going to be higher. The next card's a six, so I was right. Now I've got to decide whether the next card is going to be higher or lower than six. I'm going to say lower and it's a seven. So I was wrong, so it's incorrect. So um, that's what this mechanic is. Now, I, the whole purpose of this is just to work out the logic. It's not to make it pretty or work um, as a game. That isn't the idea here. So I've just got, so you press square to start um, and then X gets you your first number, which is a four. So I'm gonna say higher than four. It was lower, so I was incorrect. So now three, um, I'm gonna say higher than three. Gosh, it was lower again. I was incorrect twice. One, it's gotta be higher this time. Higher than one. It's a four, it's higher, it's correct. So that's that's the game and that's what this is generating for you. So this is just looking at the logic in order to get that to work. It's not, I'm not tidying this up and making this nice. Um, I've tried to get it so that it will work with various things, which means I've got some weird counter things going on, which you possibly won't need in your game, but um, I've, I've needed it here um, f to to make it into more of a, a game-looking thing. But anyway, uh, right, let's have a look and see what I need. You need a signal generator, first of all. Um, I've chosen to that to generate a number on a sweep of 0.1 seconds. And you can see here is our number being generated here. This is our random number, and here's a random number here. So I've got that running through a 0.1 sweep, and it's got a max value between zero and 10, and a minimum value of between zero and 10. And so that's our random number being generated there. So uh, I've got that displaying. Obviously, you probably won't need that in your game for it to d display at all. Um, and this feeds our random number into a calculator, which is going to round it up. Because so we don't want 10.4 or uh, 8.432 or something like that. We, we want uh, to round it up to the nearest whole number. So that's what that is doing. And that's passing that information to our variable modifier here. Um, so that number is then going into here and that's being set. So this is a variable called current that is going to update and it's gonna do that when it gets power and it gets power after you've pressed either a triangle or a cross button. So you've made your decision higher or lower and that's the point at which it picks its next number, which is why at the beginning we had to have a number first um, and I've got some um, counters and things in here so that you don't see the instructions and you don't see the incorrect or correct parts uh, for that first, very first number because it's it's going from zero to the first number um, to depending on whether you press, if you press lower, if you press the cross button, it's always going to tell you you're incorrect because uh, the first is always going to be a zero. So that's what that's doing. Anyway. Uh, so you're pressing a button, so either triangle or cross, so that's going into this XOR gate. Um, that signal is then going into this uh, timer, and it's also going into this microchip here, and this variable modifier. 
so um, this counter here this is going to set off this microchip as soon as you press the square button to say I want to start so that's turning this on um, as you can see the, the, the number is always going to start on a zero um, and then you pick a number and it picks its first number and it does that by sending power to this variable modifier which is grabbing your random number from, from the calculator which is grabbing it from the signal generator so it's going through there and that's setting this variable this is our current number when you press the triangle button um, instantaneously from you pressing the button it sets what this number is here to the previous variable so it's setting it so uh, first of all it's a zero you press a triangle this becomes a zero uh, and then you're going to press um, a number and then this is become a number and then when you press again this is going to become the same number and the reason we have this timer on here as a delay is because this is picking our new number and obviously we'd have the same numbers in both if we uh, if we didn't have that delay in there so it's, it's taking the current number and then it's making that the previous number then it's picking a new number that's what that is doing right now in this microchip which is all um, closed off to start with it's all turned off to start with um, is the workings out to say whether or not you are correct or not so um, we're going to turn this on uh, once this counter has been uh, set off twice and this counter is wired up to the XOR gate so uh, once you've pressed you press the X button to get your first number and then you're going to press high or lower and then this will open up this and start the calculations so that's what that counter is doing uh, here is our text and that's going to be displayed at the, the first time you press it you press uh, the first time it says press square and then cross once you've done that it then says press triangle or cross and that's to do with this counter you can have a look at this I, I know this is complicated um, um, you can have a look at this in the dream reverse it might make it more sense to you if you can actually see it anyway the calculation part right, so we're looking here we've got a selector and um, the triangle button is Y to B and the cross button is wired to C B and C are then wired to these things so if B then that means that um, you pressed the uh, triangle button so if you press the triangle button and we've got a calculator here that says is the number the current number is the previous number sorry is the previous number let's just here's our chips here so is no it is the current number what am I saying if, if, if this number the current number is bigger than the previous number then and you chose a triangle it's going into this OR gate which is looking to see if either of these two are uh, 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 are sending a signal um, so it's gonna say correct and if that is not true then it's gonna say incorrect so it's looking to see did you press higher then it's correct if you press anything else it's going through these gates and it's going to show as incorrect 
and the same here with the C. So it's looking to see, did you press the X button? And this time, is it smaller than? If that's true, then it's true. If that's true, it's not true, then it's false. And that's how that works. So you've just got a correct or incorrect, depending on whether you press the correct button and whether the correct calculation. You've also got, is the number the same? In which case, it's the same. Um, so it's always, you don't need to pass that through because um, uh, it's always going to show as false. <coughs> because we're not giving the players the option to choose, it's going to be the same number. We're going to say just high or low. If you wanted to add in an option for them to choose, it's going to be the same. Then obviously you'd have to do another AND gate and pass that through here uh, as well. So, and you'd have another selector option up here for uh, the other button. So here's our number displayers. This one is displaying the previous number. And this is saying same, this is saying lower, this is saying higher, this is incorrect, this is saying incorrect. So that's it. I know there's a lot of wires and a lot of gadgets and that is a little complex, but basically what is happening is uh, a signal generator is creating a random number. You're pressing a button that is changing a variable uh, for the first number. Then you're going to choose again, uh, whether it's higher or lower. And the action of doing that is picking a new number, setting the old number comparing the old number with the new number going into this microchip and then calculating whether or not you are correct or not depending on whether you pressed higher or lower so that's what it's doing so there you go right so um on indreams.me feedback section how do i Somebody asked, glitch effect on a text gadget. Does anyone know if there's a way to use the grade and effects gadget just for text? I'm wanting a glitch effect for some text, say a billboard without the glitch affecting the whole scene. Is there a way to do this? Um, the response, um, Tap Giles says, no, the grade effect can only affect um, the whole thing. It cannot affect only a part of the image. There are color settings that can be set to only affect certain colors but the glitchy stuff doesn't work like that. So he says, that's a shame, would have been cool. Thanks for answering me. However, um, the real answer to this question is if you want to create glitch effects with some text, then you want to animate it. So you can create your own wonderful glitch effects with no problem at all. Um, it's just a matter of uh, playing about with some animation. So, aha. Let's see if we can create something glitchy. I'm not quite sure what sort of glitch effect he's going for. Um, so this may not be useful for him particularly, but hey, let's let's see how we can go. I'm going to put a, a signal generator down to create some randomness and some text. So um, here is some glitchy text. There we go. Um, here's some glitchy text. Uh, I'm going to put that uh, in the world. Um, and I'm going to stick it on here. Here is some glitchy text. Okay, so first thing, let's just go with um, just the text. And what I'm gonna do is, oh, shouldn't have done that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is put in a keyframe. And I'm gonna choose a text that looks like a glitchy text. There's one that's a bit glitchy looking. Uh, if I can find it. There, there we go. That looks glitchy. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna 
create some random randomness in the, with this signal generator and pop that in oh yeah that's not glitchy enough that's yeah so that's now that's now glitching away there you can you can play about with the the sweep um let's not have a pause time it, it gets really glitchy then that's really fast that's there we go so it's 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 glitching it's moving the font backwards and forwards it's actually moving the font although my keyframe uh is is for for one it's actually moving along so you're getting all the 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 texts in between as well so you're not just getting the two if you want it to flick from one to another um i think what we're gonna need to do is put it in a selector and then do that so that's now going to flick backwards and forwards from um, just just the two options rather than um, go through all of the text but it's entirely up to you what sort of effect you're going for so there's some glitchy text it's glitching the text is glitching right let's 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 not do that that's one version let's go with um some texture uh there we go let's go glitchy let's auto fit the do that spread that out like that um, now we want to animate this so there's various different ones so you can you can animate like like that uh, we can do that the, the text strength can be changed and the scale can be changed that's quite a good effect so what we do is we go into action con recorder and just There we go and we can speed that up let's make it really fast there we go and that gives you some glitch in if we was to um, combine that uh, with this so let's let's have a go at this there we go so now we've got an animated glitchy text thing. No signals, um, manipulators, no nothing. Just a couple of action recorders. And you just wiggle away at the, uh, at the sliders. And you can create some really interesting effects, some animation effects, like instantaneously. Uh, that looks quite good, actually. So if you're going for a sort of a glitchy effect, have a go with the sliders and the action recorders. Just use the action recording to record yourself moving the sliders about and you'll get some really interesting effects i mean we've got our text here let's move our text over to red and put another action recorder on and now in case you didn't know you could do this that's how you get rainbow effects with colored text slow it down there we go it's pretty cool you don't need um, randomizers at all you, you can be your own randomizer obviously it's going to play in a loop but uh, that looks pretty random to me I think that looks quite good so there you go that's how you can do really simply do glitchy effects um, with some text 
Right, nobody's actually asked me for this, but they have asked me about how to do thumbnails and um, title sequences and all sorts of things in the past. And I've just made this for myself. Um, you don't need to publish your version of this. You can keep this in on your local drive and and, uh, uh, and, and use it to make pictures and stuff. So what I've done is I've created a, uh, a thumbnail creator. So if I go into view now, it's a bit hard to say. Okay, that, that's what we've got. That's all it is. Um, so let's go into uh, edit mode and have a look and see what we've got. I'm just going to turn show hide on. So I've got a pedestal and on it is a microchip and attached to that is a sun and sky gadget, a global settings gadget and a light and that light is there. So um, I've made this so that uh, when I make my objects um, I can just pop this in as an element, place it in the right place take and then take a picture. So um, Basically what I've done is I've uh, reduced down the sky brightness, made it nice and blue. Uh, in the global settings, I've turned the imp off and uh, I've made my, put my light up there. And you can always change these settings. So if you, um, sun and sky, you can always change the color, make it a different color for your object. But uh, anyway, we've got, got our, thumbnail creator there it is there so if I make something so um, I'm gonna put something in from the from the dream reverse that uh, there we go there's media molecules um, thing right so um, what I do now is I go in and I go to my creations and I look for my thumbnail generator. There it is. And I place my ped pedestal under the object. And um, I'm going to delete that. Let's just put show and hide on. There we go. So we get this in the right position like this. Um, we're going to play mode there we go and there is our object with my settings for taking pictures so I've got a light there got a background so I think that looks pretty cool so now we go into modes and we go into photo mode and we can take a photograph now at the moment you can see the gadget um, there so let's come out of there let's do that there we go let's go to photo mode again there we go so that we are so we can now move around and we can take our photograph of our object how we want it you can always change it so that you can see the pedestal it's up, it's up to you uh, so I'm going to take a photograph there we go and now that photograph uh, is in there I'm going to save photographs. You can save it locally or you can save it online. There we go. So you've saved your photograph. So this is my creation now. So uh, I'll put me show a hide and I will just delete it. It's gone. And now we can save our object and um, it's completely stampable now. It doesn't have your fancy um, lights. It doesn't have um, that skybox or anything attached to it because you've deleted it. You now save it, you delete it, it's done. And then when you come to, I'm gonna have to save this, aren't I? Okay, so we're gonna save it. Um, doesn't matter what you wanna save it as, we have sculpture. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so I've saved it. There it is. And now I'm going to pick my picture. There's the picture I saved. And there we go. My thumbnail already done. But if you go into viewing the object, you see the 
all that background and everything is gone. Now you can get really fancy. You can put all sorts of things um, on your thumbnail creator. Whole backgrounds, mountain scapes, whatever you want. You just have it in a deletable single object. You just plonk it down, take your picture, delete it okay and then you can you make really great thumbnails but you're not forcing other people to uh, stamp that into their level when they want to use your object so there we go i'm going to delete this now because i don't want it so um i'm going to go to delete and i'm going to delete that are you sure i don't want to delete it yes i do gone okay so that's it then that's how you do a thumbnail creator that was Dr. Lex number 12. I hope you enjoyed that and found something interesting in there for you. As always, these videos are made because you've given me ideas in your comments. Um, if those ideas uh, are a little bit too complex or that there's just not enough of them to do, then I'm going to start looking further afield on other places where people uh, talk about dreams and see if uh, I can help out some of those people. And so it's going to be a bit of a mixture of both your comments and um, feedback and Reddit and that sort of thing. And also people that have asked me actually in the Dreamiverse. By the way, uh, that's not the best place to ask me questions about how to do things in Dreams because you have very limited um, characters in there and I, it's really hard to uh, uh, type using the DS4. So uh, don't ask me questions in the Dreamiverse if, if at all possible pop them here on the comments that's the best place uh, and i will try and answer as many of the questions that i can and some of them i will make into videos so um keep those questions coming and i'll see you with the next dr lex video catch you in your dreams <laughs>